movies start with a black screen. Movie would be amazing at CinemaSense. And logos. Really long and dramatic logos. Holy sh**. Movie is amazing at watching CinemaSense. Get yourself ready for some reading. Holy sh**. Movie is a fan of CinemaSense. Also reading. If you want to make the world a better place. If the movie had just said narrating, I would have stopped the movie and the Sins video right here. Shortest Sins video ever. Job would be done. We'd have an internal discussion about even releasing it. We are transporting 11 million sticks of dynamite. Haha, uh -huh, movie, but this is nowhere near 11 million of anything. Calling you out on your humongous exaggeration because I obviously hate movies way more than I hate myself. A helicopter is about to overtake, intercept, and overpower a fing cargo jet. Wait, it's even worse than I thought. They fing landed that chopper on top of the airplane. Batman will stop you. <laughs> He always stops you. No, he doesn't. What about that time with the two boats? Hmm, interesting that the pilot picks that situation as a time Batman stopped the Joker, since it was the people on the boats who decided not to blow each other up, and Batman had nothing to do with it. Batman's never going to see it coming. Like that time with the parade and the Prince music? Again, kind of an interesting situation to bring up, since Joker told everyone on TV that parade was happening. Also, while I recognize this movie is making fun of all the iterations of the Joker as if they're all one continuous story, I'd like to be that dickhead who brings up the fact that Joker died in the Tim Burton Batman this is referencing. Two-Face! We need that door open, baby! You know, kudos to this movie for bringing back Billy Dee Williams to play Two-Face when the studio decided to go with Tommy Lee Jones back in 1995. I've removed two since, but I'm going to add one back for still not giving him a good number of lines. Apparently it's 23 degrees in Gotham, but everyone I've seen in the movie so far decided to just wear long sleeves and pants outside, except for the extremely smart Commissioner Gordon. You wanna get nuts? 20% of this movie is callbacks to previous Batman things. Pewter, where's the bomb? But Joker already told you where the bomb was, right? It was on freaking TV. Is this scene funny? Yes. Is Batman literally playing a guitar in the middle of fighting crime? Yes. Yes, he is. You think you're my greatest enemy? Yes! You're obsessed with me! This humorous conversation about Joker trying to get Batman to recognize their relationship actually takes way longer than the time we saw remaining on the bomb. Hey, I know this is a Batman spoof and literally nothing matters, but a sin's a sin. You mean nothing to me. Neither does this bomb, which exploded 20 seconds ago, according to the unforgiving nature of time. <laughs> These helicopters doing backflips. <laughs> Jesus, how many people were standing around a power plant that was about to explode? Isn't this on an island? These aren't all cops and plant workers, are they? Hmm, an on-the-shoulders ticker tape parade celebrating Batman? This is like no Gotham I've ever seen before. Gotham f***ing hates Batman. He's a vigilante for f***'s sake. Batmobile's exhaust fire kills hundreds. Film at 11. Despite all the future tech in existence, Batman's elevator is slow as f***. Microwaving lobster. Rich loner or not. Great movie gag or not. Microwaving lobsters for suckers. Yes, it is hilarious that Batman would have an entire navy of vehicles. But while that hilariousness washes over you, consider this. He waited two minutes while the lobster reheated in the microwave. Then carried that reheated lobster on a tray while he got on a jet ski and powered the thing out of dock 23 feet, then stopped to eat a lobster. Yeah, but where are the amps for this guitar? Okay, so Batman sat down to watch Jerry Maguire, but the f***ing thing is almost over. Admit it, you just wanted the most famous scene to show up so everyone would know what it is, didn't you? Didn't you? <laughs> Lego Batman is a f***ing dick to Alfred. Three fireplaces in one Wayne Manor room? Really? Only three fireplaces? Where's the fireplace for the fireplace, since we're in Lego exaggeration movie? I've seen you go through similar phases in 2016 and 2012 and 2008 and 2005 and 1997 and 1995 and 1992 and 1989 and that weird one in 1966. Believe me, while I'm laughing my ass off, the Lego Batman movie claims that Batman is like at least 90 years old and Alfred must be like 30 or something. Lego Batman movie utterly retcons all Wayne Manor location canon in a silly pullout joke shot. Your greatest fear is being a part of a family again. Nope, that's a stepping stone fear to the real fear, which is losing a family again. Alfred clearly attended the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things on a psychology scholarship. No, 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 no. Batman acts like a literal toddler, and Alfred just rolls with it, because this is regular behavior in this universe. And I'm just saying, the Batman just rolled around on the floor like your asshole two-year-old niece until he got what he wanted, like your asshole two-year-old niece. Tonight on Metropolis in Focus, we have our- I realize Batman v Superman created a circumstance where Gotham and Metropolis are literally a few hundred yards from each other, but this is GCN, Gotham City Network, and they have a popular show called Metropolis in Focus? Superman, tell me, how do you feel about your recent banishment of Zod to the Phantom Zone? The movie brings this up to show that Superman cares about his relationship with Zod, unlike Batman with the Joker. But wouldn't Lex Luthor be Superman's Joker? In the movie, Zod is the one Superman always kills. Lex Luthor always ends up in jail or an asylum, always coming back for more and failing time and again like Joker does. It's not a Batman movie if Tony Stark doesn't attend some over-the-top garish party of some kind. 
that all the kids at the orphanage call me dick. Well, children can be cruel. <laughs> Why does Lego Dick Grayson need a human being sized pen to take notes? That pen is almost as tall as he is. We've gathered here tonight to mark the retirement of Jim Gordon. Yeah, but you gathered here tonight in a f***ing ice skating rink. Why was that again? Any reason at all? Who makes a f***ing trailer for your city's new police commissioner? No one, except f***ing Gotham City, apparently. Also, this is Barbara Gordon, daughter of Jim Gordon. And yet, this movie just spent time showing me Bruce fall in love at first sight with her. Suggesting Bruce, Jim Gordon's ally for decades, has somehow never seen Gordon's daughter before this evening, which is ludicrous. To save time, all the bullet points listed on this slide are solid black lines. Also, the new commissioner's plan includes three normal things and ninjutsu, which Microsoft Word doesn't even think is a real word. He hasn't captured Riddler. You know she's right. He hasn't captured Bane oh. or Catwoman. Oh. Man, this is easily the best part of the movie, pointing out that Batman actually doesn't do a lot of things to actually stop crime. Everyone's reactions around him are killer, and this deserves a good three sins off. Luckily for Joker and his get all the supervillains to surrender plan, they all decided to stand in an easily boxable crowd so that they could be gift wrapped for the good guys. All of you have the right to remain silent. Let's roll out! She definitely f***ed up the Miranda rights there by basically leaving out all but the first line, thereby ensuring all these criminals will go free with a half-decent lawyer. One is the loneliest number. Also, the only reason this Batman all alone black and white moment uses one as the loneliest number is because Arrested Development had already used Sound of Silence. The young orphan you adopted at the gala, remember? Gotham's adoption requirements are probably the worst thing about the city, as Batman somehow adopts this kid with a distracted verbal agreement that did not require papers to be signed or interviews to be conducted. RIP! It's Lego Batman Magic Mike. Why the f*** didn't Batman just turn this into the Batplane in the first place? I mean, they're going to the Fortress of Solitude, so that should have been vehicle number one. Why did they park so far away? Now you gotta make your way to the Atomic Cauldron and get that Phantom Zone projector. It seems kinda weird that Superman keeps the PZP in this Mission Impossible-esque vault at the Fortress of Solitude. Looks pretty inconvenient for him if he ever has to use it, and it's not like he has it on him every time he goes to fight crime. Robin! As in the small, midwestern, frail bird. Hey, robins are a robust species surviving in multiple varied climates that other dainty birds can't stand. Back off the robin bird and just make your jokes about how Robin, the character, is lame, goofy, and stupid. Leave the bird alone. It's absolutely unreal that Superman went through all that trouble to protect the PZP, but doesn't have any alarms that go off when it's actually taken. He could have learned something from the people who rigged that boulder booby trap in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Where the f*** did the Phantom Zone projector go? It's not under Batman or Robin's capes, and just underlines the fact that this item is impossible to carry around conveniently. And this asshole still doesn't have the PZP until, magically, he's apparently been holding it the whole time. This is where the movie loses me and starts to just be noise. Tossing in the Wicked Witch from Wizard of Oz, Sauron, Gremlins, Agents from the Matrix, King Kong, Voldemort, Daleks. The first Lego movie at least grounded its weirdness in that it was all the imagination of a real human child. This movie just throws everything it can think of into the mix and expects you to applaud the randomness. Also, in a previous scene, we heard about Superman sending Zod to the Phantom Zone. Where the f*** is that asshole? You were going to say something about recruiting the universe's greatest villains to conquer a superhero. How the ever-loving f*** do you cast the actual Voldemort in this movie as Alfred, but then hire someone else to voice Voldemort? This is the weirdest casting decision since Courtney Love in anything. I love Eddie Izzard, but the movie misses out on some great meta gags with this choice. Why would the Phantom Zone gun even have a release all inmates setting? And that's beyond the question of why Superman even needs a goddamn space gun to send bad guys to the zone in the first place. He's a 9,000 year old incarnation of evil with an eye for jewelry. Give it up for Sauron! Good. Look, I like this movie, but this one by one late night talk show introduction of all the Phantom Zone villains is just for us, the audience. It literally makes no sense in the universe of the movie that the Joker would do this, or that the villains would all agree to wait patiently to escape back to Earth so everyone could have a proper introduction to the humans of Gotham. What a crew, huh? And they all work for me! Jeez, where are all the super friends during this shit? I'm rubbing my butt all over your stuff. We're gonna have to rename this the Buttmobile. This movie had at least five screenwriters, but none of them were able to stop this shitty lazy joke from making it into the final script. What are you gonna do? Get a bunch of criminals together to fight the criminals? That's a stupid idea. Haha, -ha, for the self-awareness, but too bad Lego Batman wasn't the head of the studio when they made Suicide Squad. This movie just got way more Transformers and Furious than I think it intended. Somehow, Joker had the time, materials, and construction workers to turn Wayne Manor into a theme park. And in a movie with King Kong, Lava Spewing Sauron, and f***ing Talking Velociraptors, the flying monkeys from Oz will now make some kind of impact. Did Batman even fix the plane while he was out there? Maybe he did, but if so, it's running on one f***ing engine and just got hit by lightning. Even though this movie is silly and you can't take even a smidgen of it seriously, it illustrates the problem of too many villains. A lot of these assholes could end the world on their own, but the movie loses them when they're all working together. Sure, killing Sauron is great, but you still have Voldemort, a Kraken, King Kong, and others out there. And you couldn't be bothered to make a joke about killing Sauron by throwing the One Ring into the fires of Mount Doom? So many ways you could have gone with that, but you went with the blue fireball route.
Batman's dead parents are about to ruin another movie. This whole thing is beginning to feel a lot like the ending of Kung Fu Panda 3 to me. Do, do, do. Scanning for badness. Phyllis shows Batman the very recent bad things he's done, and nothing from before, which is emotionally convenient to the plot. Joker, you mean nothing to me. Seriously? His feelings toward Joker are considered bad by the Phantom Zone? F***ing Phantom Zone. I can't let you go. My boss will be really mad at me. So if there's this kind of hierarchy at work in the Phantom Zone, how was the PZP able to unleash all the bad guys a few minutes ago? Listen, I just wanted to say that I'm really, really, really... I realize Batman probably has a hard time saying sorry, but even for comedic effect, get on with it already. That's why I called in some backup. Flip, 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 flip. Why does Batman call all the bad guys, which was a stupid idea, of course, if not the super friends? Are the Super Friends Justice League not a group of heroes that Batman needs to curry favor with? That someone is defeating a Kraken thing with a giant hammer says a lot about this movie. Stop moving around, muggle! Voldemort is trying to use the PZP instead of, you know, magic to win. Plus, wouldn't the Phantom Zone just let them come back anyway? Shut up, Joker. If there's no Gotham, then I'll never get to fight you again. This Batman-Joker fighting relationship, an amusing substitute for a loving relationship, officially goes too far, even in a comedy. If Joker's sole purpose is to get recognition from Batman, then what's the point of conjuring up evil plans anymore once he gets that recognition? The plan to keep the two plates that sew Gotham together by using sheer brute strength works. We need all of you to join us and help bring this city back together. How the f*** is he broadcasting this shit? And goddamn, every person in Gotham must be the bravest mother to ever live to go along with this plan. I made a promise. I gotta go back to the Phantom Zone. Why hasn't Superman noticed his PZP is missing yet? Jesus, show the part where he's saying show me the money at least. All important movies end with a white screen. That's racist. All in all, it's just a brick in the wall. She sometimes takes a little pack of mayonnaise and she'll squirt it in her mouth all over, and then she'll take an egg and kind of... <laughs> she calls it a mayonnaise. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Alfred! Oh, we have to stick together. Sticking together is what good waffles do. Martha! What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Chance of total mission failure is 110%. That's impossible. No, no one can give more than 100%. Is that real lava? Real acid? This is the magic trick, huh? Illusion, Michael. Mm. Trick is something a whore does for money. Lego Batman is not great with the healthy snacking. I mean, Batman eats microwaved leftover lobster in the first 10 minutes of the film. That's like hitting the food rock bottom. How much better would Lego Batman be at his job if he had a steady supply of healthy, nutritious, energy-boosting snacks delivered to his Wayne Manor Island? Answer a lot. A thousand times. If you go right now to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and use the code SINS, you can receive 50% off your first order. That's literally half off. Half! I'm going to call you Half Squad. Lately, I've really been digging these vanilla bean wafers. They're scrumptious. But Naturebox has tons of snacks to choose from, for tastes from salty to spicy to sweet and everything in between. The problem is choice. So if you need an energy-boosting snack after a night of fighting crime, don't microwave lobster for the love of God. Get out. Instead, sign up for NatureBox. NatureBox.com slash CinemaSins, promo code SINS. Sign up today and get 50% off your first order. OMG. Oh my God!